Hello, welcome to this video tutorial on Oracle's DTrace technology for Oracle Linux. DTrace is a comprehensive dynamic tracing facility originally developed for Oracle Solaris but is now available with Oracle Linux. You can use DTrace to explore your system and to understand how it works, to track down performance problems, or to locate the cause of abnormal behavior problems. The tor th this tutorial covers installing the DTrace packages from the Unbreakable Linux network, the ULN, loading DTrace kernel modules and listing DTrace probes, some simple command line based examples, uh, DTrace scripts, and where to get more information. That is the DTrace guide and the DTrace tutorial. For this tutorial, I'll be using a virtual machine in Oracle VM VirtualBox. I have Oracle Linux 7.1 installed on this VM. The UEKR3 is loaded, version 3.8.13-98.4.1 and the system is registered with ULN and I am currently subscribed to three channels on ULN the OL7 DTrace user space channel, the OL7 UEKR3 channel and the OL7 latest channel. I'm going to open up a browser and show that I'm already logged into ULN. The system name is OLN DTrace. I'll click on my system name to manage my subscriptions. I'll scroll down and you'll see that I am subscribed to these three channels. The user space, DTrace user space tools, the UEKR3, and the OL7 latest channel. I'll click on the channels tab. Then I'm going to click on the release drop down list and select Oracle Linux 7. And scroll down to the DTrace user space channel and you'll see that there are two packages. So I'll click on the link to those packages and notice the DTrace utils package. This package contains all the DTrace utilities and needs to be installed on our system. I go back to a command line window and run an RPM-QA and grep for DTrace. You'll see that the DTrace utils package is already installed. And once you're subscribed to ULN, you can just run yum update or yum install to install that package. I'm going to go back to, uh, UL to the ULN web interface and um, select another channel select the uh, UEKR3 channel and you'll see that it has 44 packages associated with it so I'll click on the 44 link and here you can see all the DTrace module packages for the different kernel versions um, you can also scroll down at the bottom and you'll see some uh, additional packages on the list there's a DTrace module shared headers and a, and a live DTrace CTF package and these are installed already as you can see in the terminal window from the output of the RPM command. And uh, if I run uname-r, it shows me the kernel version. And then I need to have the DTrace modules for that particular kernel version installed, which I do. And if, you, if, you, if it's not installed, if you run a DTrace command, it will download the package and install it automatically. Or you can use the um install and just install it directly. I'm going to go uh, back to the command line here and, and do a list of uh, a directory. Slash lib, slash modules, slash whatever the kernel version is, slash kernel, slash drivers, slash dtrace. And you can see the uh, kernel modules are installed in this directory. There are seven of those. You don't need to install the DTrace, uh, I'm sorry, the DT uh, kernel modules. Those are for internal testing. But you do need to install the fast track, fast trap module using the mod probe command and install the profile module and the SDK and the SysTrace. The DTrace module gets installed automatically by installing one of these other four kernel modules. If I do an LS mod command and grab for DTrace, you'll see that DTrace module is installed. I'm going to list some DTrace probes for all the providers and to do that use the DTrace minus L command for list and it shows all the providers all the probes for all the providers. Probes are tracing points or instrumentation points that enable you to record data at various points of interest. Each probe has four fields, a provider, a module, a function, and a name and when you reference these probes you have to use colons to separate uh, those four fields. Um, if you want to see the 
probes for a specific provider. Use the minus capital P and give it the uh, provider name. So here's the D-trace probes. And here's the syscall probes. And there are a lot of syscall probes. If I pipe that to word count minus L, you'll see the number of syscall probes. And if I um, count the total number of probes, you'll see that the majority of the total number are syscall probes. I can also show you the um, just a list of uh, all the PROC probes and the profile probes and the SCED probes and finally the IO probes. Now I'll run some uh, dtrace commands to enable these probes. To enable uh, all the probes for a specific provider all you need to do is remove the uh, minus L, the list option. So that command there enables all the probes for the dtrace provider and the, the, it shows the begin probe and then I do a control C and it shows the end probe. It shows you the CPU that the probe, uh, where the probe fired, the unique identifier, the function name, and the probe name. The function name is nothing in this case. I can use the minus N option and uh, give a particular or a specific probe name. And the name I gave it in this example is dtrace colon 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 begin. Remember you need a colon uh, uh, to uh, separate each of the four fields. The, the provider, the, the module, the function, and the probe name. I can add an action. I can specify an action. The action in this example is trace. And what I'm going to do is display hello world. Trace is the most basic action where it just takes an expression as an argument and traces a result to a directed buffer. Notice the trace. The, notice the action is surrounded by curly brackets and terminated with a semicolon and quoted around the whole string. If I add another trace, which is exit, I'm sorry, another action, which is exit, then it exits without me having to hit uh, control C. I can add a minus Q for quiet, and then it suppresses all that, all that CPU and ID and function and name information and just gives you the output uh, of, the, uh, of the action of the trace command. The next dtrace command traces the time of entry for each system call. The provider is syscall. There's no module name, no function name. The probe name is entry. The action is trace. And the argument is timestamp. Timestamp is a built-in D variable that gives the current value of a nanosecond timestamp counter. I'll issue the command. I hit Control-C to exit. And the output shows the function name, the probe name, and the timestamp. And I'll repeat the command so that you can see it. Now I'm going to open up a second window where I can run some Linux commands which will generate output for the remaining dtrace examples in this video. The next dtrace command displays commands that are executing on your system. The provider is proc. There's no module name, no function name. The pro probe name is exec. The action is trace. And the argument is string of arg zero. The string of operator is a D keyword which converts the operand to a string. All these keywords are, again, are described in the dtrace guide, which I'll reference at the end of the video. So I'll initiate the command. I'll go to the second window and run a man ls to generate some output. Quit out of that. Come back to the first window, and you'll see the output, um, the function name, the function, the name, and then the command that is executing on the system. I'll repeat the command so that you can see, again, what I ran. The next dtrace command displays new processes with timestamps and command line arguments. The provider is proc, no module name, no function name. The probe name is exec-success. The action in this example is printf. Printf allows for formatting. Uh, the parameters consist of a format string followed by arguments. The arguments are timestamp and a pointer to the struct psinfo, which again is described in the dtrace guide that I'll reference at the end of the uh, lesson. The second argument uh, provides the initial command line arguments. So I'll initiate the command. I will uh, run man ls in the second window to generate some output, quit out of that, and then uh, control C to quit. And you'll see the, uh, the, the timestamp is shown, the probe, the function name, the probe name, the timestamp, the process, and the command line arguments. The next dtrace command displays files opened by each process. Uh, the provider is syscall. There's 
There's no module name. I'm going to specify open star as the function name, and this will include all functions that begin with the with O P E N, and the probe name is entry. The action again is printf. The arguments are exec name and copy in st string arg zero. Exec name is the name of the current processes exec ex executable file, and copy in string is a D subroutine, which is described in the dtrace guide reference at the end of the video. So I'll initiate the command. After I get all my changes made, then I'll go to the second window and run man s to generate some output. Hit Q, the output. Go back to the first window. Again, here we show the output, the function, where the probe fired, the probe name, the process, and the files opened by each process. And there's the command again. The next dtrace command displays the number of system calls by system call using aggregations. The provider is syscall, no module name, no function name, the probe name is entry. The action in this example is a num aggregator, aggregation. All aggregations, num in this example, are prefixed with a, an at sign. Probe func is a D built-in variable which provides the function field of the current probe. Count is a function name whose result is the number of times called. I'll run man s, quit out. When you use aggregations, no output is shown until you press control C and then the output is shown, which in this case is the number of system calls by each system call. The next dtrace command counts the number of write system calls and the number of read system calls. This example uses two probes. The first provider is syscall, no middle name, I'm sorry, no module name. The function name is write, the probe name is entry. Then I'll use a comma to, to separate the two probes. The second provider is syscall, no, func no module name, function name is read, probe name is entry. This command also uses aggregation, as indicated by the at sign. String join is a D subroutine, which is described in the dtrace reference, got reference at the end of this uh, video. I'll run man s again in the second window to generate some output. Then I'll quit out of man s and I'll come back and show the output, which is the number of write system calls invoked by processes and the number of read system calls invoked by processes. This last dtrace command aggregates the number of read system calls but uses a predicate to exclude the read system calls initiated by the dtrace process. Predicates are expressions that are enclosed in a pair of slashes that are evaluated at probe firing time to determine whether the associated action should be executed. The predicate in this example is that the current process's executable file is not equal to dtrace. FDS is, is the files that, that the current process has opened in a file info underscore t array. File inf info underscore t is described in the dtrace guide and fi underscore path name is the full path name. So all these um, arrays and predicates and aggregates and variables and subroutines and all these type of things that I'm using are described in the dtrace guide that I'll point out at the end of the video. I'll go, I'll go to the second window and run uh, man ls. And again, with aggregation, you don't get any output until you hit the control C. And my output here is the process name, the full path name of the file that the process had, uh, process had opened, and then number of read system calls invoked by processes. I'm going to run some dtrace scripts. Each script ends with a .d suffix. I have some scripts already created. This first script shows quantized results uh, for buffer sizes used in read sys calls, it gives a statistical breakdown of the sizes passed in the read sys call. This can be useful to see what buffer sizes are commonly used. Um, quant size is a D aggregating function that is described in the dtrace guide. Use the dtrace minus s option to run this. Because the script uses aggregation, no output is displayed until I terminate it. And this shows the uh, 256 is the most common buffer size used read in system calls with 37 instances. The next script 
counts system calls over a 10 second period. The script name is syscall.d. The script increments a counter and then exits after a count of 10 seconds. Use the dtrace minus s command to run this. Because the script contains the exit action, I don't need to press control C. I just need to wait 10 seconds. The output will show the number of system calls by system call. And there you go. And I'll show the contents of the script again before continuing. The next script records the time that processes spend invoking read calls, read system calls. The script name in this example is rtime.d. This script stores the value of a timestamp to a thread local, local variable when it enters the read system call and then subtracts that value from the time step when returning from that read system call. Thread local variables are described in the dtrace guide. The script uses the printf action to format the output. And you can see there um, the executable file name, the time spent in each read system call in nanoseconds is, is, is the result of this script. And the last script is uh, shows the details of block IO events. And um, this script uses enumeration, which associates a set of integers with a set of identifiers called enumerators that the compiler recognizes and replaces with the corresponding integer value. I'm going to run some fdisk commands in the um, second window so I can generate some block IO output. And you can see there uh, that it's already starting to generate some output just by listing the devices. I'll go ahead and format, or I'm sorry, partition a device, and more generate more output is being generated in the background. Accept all the defaults and write it. Come back and see um, the output again. The output includes the CPU where the probe fired, um, the unique probe ID, the probe name, the device name, the probe name. Uh, with a timestamp, the executable file name, the block size, sector number, so forth. This concludes the DTrace video demo. Visit the URL referenced on the page here. And the DTrace guide describes the deprogramming language, aggregation, subroutines, build in variables, and functions. Pretty much everything you ever wanted to know about using DTrace. The tutorial gives examples about uh, tracing operating system behavior, tracing process call, process creation, tracing system calls, tracing user space applications, and many other examples. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.